Okay, yeah. So I'm going to talk about augmentation varieties and disk potentials. And this is joint work with Kenny Blakey, Johansson, and Chris Woodward. There are three key takeaways I want you to get from today's talk is that we construct check and available algebra for lifted Legendrians in circle fiber contact manifolds. And we also construct the augmentation ideal and augmentation variety from these check and available algebra in this setup of the special type of Legendrians in this circle fiber contact manifolds. You can you have also heard of circle fiber contact manifolds as pre-quantum bundles because they are also known as that in the literature. And finally, I want to talk about how you can recover the augmentation variety from the disk potential in certain cases. In particular, we'll have a equation of this sort where the augmentation variety is equal to the zero set defined by the disk potential of the projection of the Legendrian. And this confirms a conjecture posed by Dimitri Gruzel and Golovko in 2019. Before getting into the intricacies, I want to give a big picture of where today's talk sits in the big landscape of symplectic and contact geometry. So as we know, chekhanov Vilishburg algebra associates a DGA to a Legendrian, such that the homology, which is also called the Legendrian contact homology, is invariant of Legendrian isotopy. But there's a problem that in practice, this algebraic object is quite complicated to deal with in certain situations. Like it is so complicated that to say these two Legendrians are different, you would need to compute them. And the computation is already a very hard problem at the level of algebra, not even at the level of uh, holomorphic disks. To make life easier, the usage of augmentations have proved to be very fruitful. And these are some, this is a partial list of research teams who have used augmentations to construct something called the augmentation variety. And this algebraic object is just a sub variety. And this is something we are very happy with. It's easy to compare two varieties when they are equal or not equal. So you should think of augmentation variety as extracting algebraic data from the chicken of Eichberg algebra to make life easier in computations. Of course, this can come at a cost of losing some information. But something I want to point out is that since augmentation variety, as the name suggests, comes from augmentations of this DGA, you retain an important information of the geometry of the Legendrian, which is the Lagrangian fillings of the Legendrian. Let's say you have a filling L, a Lagrangian filling L of lambda, that would cut out a specific subvariety of the augmentation variety. Thus, you get some you get an equation like this where any filling would induce a sub variety of the total augmentation variety, which you can use now to obstruct certain Lagrangian fillings. Okay, now the big picture is done and let's get into the setup. The setup is the ambient contact manifold is a circle fiber contact manifold or pre-quantum bundle. This is a manifold Z, which is a circle bundle over Y. Here Y is symplectic with some symplectic form omega Y, which I'll assume to be integral from now on. Alpha, a connection one form on Z, such that the curvature is given by the pullback of the symplectic form. These two conditions enforce that Z comma alpha, the pair, is symplectic, uh, is contact. And you can check that in this situation, the Reeb flow is exactly given by an application of the circle action. In particular, for flow of time t, you just multiply it with e to the 2 pi i t. The example you should keep in your mind is the odd contact sphere over the projective space. This is a circle bundle by quotienting out with a half action on the odd contact sphere where I use complex coefficients. Here, the half action is just multiplying each by the same angle. Okay, now we are done with the ambient contact manifold. Now we'll talk about how to get Lagrangians inside this Z, starting from Lagrangians inside Y. This section follows from work of Dimitri Gruzel and Golovko in 2019. They define something called the bohr sommerfeld Lagrangian immersion as a Lagrangian immersion inside Y, such that if you pull back the bundle Z along with the connection alpha, 
you get a trivial bundle with trivial connection. So since this connection is trivial, you can take a horizontal lift and then compose with this map to get an immersion inside Z. And since you took a horizontal lift of this pullback connection, you get that this is a Lagrangian manifold. In particular, you get an immersed Lagrangian. Moreover, by forcing some conditions on the monodromy of this immersion, you can ensure that you also get embedded Lagrangians. So the takeaway is that if you have a Lagrangian immersion, which satisfies this condition of bohr summerfeldness you get Lagrangians inside Z. Now, in the case when Y is simply connected, you can get canonical bohr summerfeld immersions by taking covers of certain Lagrangians. Let's say pi is embedded inside Y as a Lagrangian, and let's say for simplicity, it is monotone. Now, you can construct a cover run map of pi such that if you compose the cover with the embedding, you get an immersion. That immersion turns out to be bohr sommerfeld So when Y is simply connected and you have a monotone Lagrangian, you can always get Lagrangian sitting above them inside Z. The example you should think of is if you start with the Clifford torus in the projective space, then you can construct by discovering thing to get the Clifford Lagrangian inside the sphere, which is given by this formula. Moreover, you can know what the covering ratio is by knowing what the symplectic areas of the disks with boundary on the Lagrangian was. In particular, if you have an n minus one dimensional Clifford torus, you get a n to one cover. So this is a picture where you have dimension two, so you get a three to one cover of the Clifford torus. Okay, now we're done with the setup. Now we'll talk about constructing check and ovulation algebra for this setup. Before going into the details, I want to point out two features of our setup is that we have Morse board degeneracy for the space of free cords. Indeed, you can check that since the re action is just re flow is just acting by the S1 action. If you have a K21 cover, you can always just flow for one over K time and hit the Lagrangian again. And you can start from any point on the Lagrangian. So you have actually lots of re cords. And the next feature is that our setup allows non exact Lagrangian cobordisms to induce DGM maps. We impose a condition which we term as tame. Here, tame means that it satisfies some topological constraints. So this should be thought of as extending to get more Lagrangian cobordisms. The main motivating example we had was to construct more augmentations. So in particular, the Harvey Lawson filling of the Clifford torus is not exact. It's a solid torus such that at the end of the solid torus, you have this disk, which has positive symplectic area. So not exact, obviously. And our setup allows the Harvey Lawson filling to give you an augmentation of the Jekanovi Lejbuk algebra for the Clifford torus. Okay, now I'll collect some of the main theorems in the paper. The assumptions are Y is integral symplectic with minimal churn number at least two. My Lagrangian is compact oriented spin monotone. I need all of this to make sense of disk potential with complex coefficients. And lambda is a bohr sommerfeld cover. With this hypothesis, we have these two results, which we have already discussed, that the Chekhan of Elishbuk algebra is a DGA whose homology is invariant. TM Lagrangian cobordisms induce DGA maps. That is, we have TFT like axioms. We construct the augmentation variety and augmentation ideal and show that they are Lagrangian isotopy invariant. And when we know that the bohr sommerfeld cover is connected and that the minimal Maslow number of my Lagrangian is two, we can actually write down what the augmentation ideal is. And it is of this formula where you have the potential. This is just a factor of multiplying by some monomial, which appears in the potential. So you should think of this clearing out the denominators in the disk potential. And this is just pulling it back to the space of 
lambda instead of pi. An augmentation variety is just the variety defined by this ideal. So we can also get the equation we started with that the augmentation variety is given by the zero set of this polynomial. I want to focus on one type of application of this theorem in today's talk, and that is to construct new isotopy classes of Legendrians. Since the augmentation ideal and variety are Legendrian isotopy invariant, we have this lemma which says that if you start with two Lagrangians whose disk potentials are not same up to a change of variables in the polynomial, then you get that their lifts are not Legendrian isotopic. We can apply this to the case of, let's say, monotone tori in projective spaces. Indeed, in 2014, Viana showed that there's infinitely many Hamiltonian isotopy classes of monotone tori inside P2 with distinct disk potential by computing their Newton polytopes. Later, me and my collaborators, Hershey and Wang in 2023, and in upcoming work of Diogo, Tonkonok, Viana, and Wu, there's a proof for the case of any projective space of any dimension by following Viana's methods. And thus, since we know that the disk potentials are distinct, we know that the lifts will have different Legendrian isotopy classes. So we get that for any standard contact sphere, you have infinitely many Legendrian tori in them. Okay, now we'll go towards the construction of the Jekana Village Bug algebra. The generators come from critical points of two Morse functions. This is a Morse function on the space of wave chords. This is a Morse function on the Legendrian. We need this because we have Morse board degeneracy for the space of wave chords. And we need this to allow for cobordisms which are non-exact. Let's say you are trying to compute the differential on an input i, where i is a critical point of the reap chord. So i is actually a reap chord. You would count maps from treat holomorphic disks, sorry, maps from treat disks, which are holomorphic in the disk part, to the target r times z with boundary on r times lambda. Here on the edges, you have one input edge and multiple output edge. So on the one input edge, you will have to start from i because we are computing del of i. You flow along the Morse flow of f naught. Then you have a disk where the, there's an asymptotic end near where the edge connects with the boundary of the disk. And you have a matching condition here that the reap chord u is asymptotic to is the same as the one where you end in your Morse trajectory. Similar asymptotic matching conditions in the outputs. And here, the matching condition is actually on lambda, because we are flowing on lambda. For this particular holomorphic tree disk, the contribution would be the word ABX. Here, I am just reading it from top to bottom. So the differential is given by counts of all such rigid tree holomorphic disks. OK, now let's make it more formal. The ingredients are of the Jekyll of Elishburg algebra are these two types. The geometric ingredients are these Morse functions I already talked about. A choice of G, which is cylindrical on R times Z and incompatible in some sense. This is a standard compatibility condition in SFT. And we need a choice of capping path because we use homology coefficients. The algebraic ingredients are a character set, which is just given by the union of critical points of these Morse functions I choose. The generators now are finite words with letters from the character set C, and the coefficient is just the group ring on the first homology of lambda. With this, we can now finally define the Chekhov Hilbert algebra. These are just infinite series of this form where W i is a word, C i is a coefficient, such that the length of the word goes to infinity as you increase the index. And the differential counts weighted holomorphic tree disks with one input and multiple output. So as you can see, this algebraic object is quite beastly to look at and computing is quite hard. It has infinitely many generators, infinitely many characters because critical because the space of reap chord has infinitely many connected components. So now I'll go towards 
how to define the augmentation variety. Recall that an augmentation is just a chain map from the DGA to any ring R, where I view this ring as a chain, which is just concentrated on grading zero and every other grading is just trivial. This can descend to the graded abelianization if I assume that R is abelian. Now we have all the ingredients we need to define the augmentation ideal. We set a basis for the free part of first homology of H1. This will act as the coefficients. And to each of these mu i, I choose Morse duals from my generator set. So ci is dual to mu i. We define a map from the space of lot of polynomials of k variables, where k is the rank of the free part, to the graded abelianization of the chekhanov elishbrook algebra by sending y i to this expression. So to read this expression, this is the coefficient. The coefficient comes from the group ring, and this just means that it's a delta function on that element of H1. And this is a shorthand for the usual expansion. So CI is a generator coming from my generator set, and e to the CI is just this infinite series given by the usual exponential formula. The ideal, the augmentation ideal is just the set of all polynomials such that if you follow it through in the graded abelianization, the image vanishes for every augmentation of the chekhanov Villageburg algebra. So basically, this ideal is just a set of relations on these type of elements in the chekhanov Villageburg algebra, which vanish under every augmentation. In particular, if you wanted to compute for lambda 2, the Clifford torus of dimension 2, you get that after, of course, choices of the H1, that the image of this polynomial 1 plus y1 plus y2 is equal to the differential applied to A, where A is the smallest record of smallest possible index. So, of course, since this is boundary applied to something, so you have that I of this expression vanishes for every augmentation because augmentation applied to this will be zero. And this phenomena is true in general for any lambda connected. In particular, we have a formula which is important to show the one of the main results is that if you evaluate the boundary of A, where A is the smallest rib chord, you get that it is equal to the disk potential multiplied by some monomial applied to the push forwards of these monomials yi by this identification i. Finally, we can define the augmentation variety as the variety defined by this ideal. Okay, that's it for my talk. Thanks for listening. Any questions? Thank you very much. There any questions? So the, the overall philosophy is that this augmentation variety should, uh, I don't know, like characterize the, the genre and isotopy uh, class or not? Are there examples where it doesn't or what? Uh... Oh, yeah. Um, okay, of course, the one thing to point out is that augmentation variety is slightly less powerful than the ideal because two ideals can give you the same variety. But now the question can be that, is the augmentation ideal strong enough to capture every? So I don't think there's a conjecture like that. And I'll, mm -hmm, let me think. Um, yeah, I don't think I have any examples off the top of my head where they're not discerning, but I don't think I can conjecture that it's true. Yeah, it sounds too strong, but it's not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so um, I don't know if there are.
no uh, question, then maybe we can uh, mm -hmm. move to uh, our last speaker. And but first, thanks, Soham again, very much.